And here is the woman herself to tell us more about her new series that shines a light on women in science. It's writer and broadcaster Dee Gilhooley. Uh, just to clarify, by the way, some viewers may mistakenly think that your second name is Hooley and your first name is Deagle. In actual fact, your second name is Gil Hooley, your first name is Dee. That's a full name, not an initial. Yeah. Welcome. Wicked to be here. Cool. So you're perhaps best known as one of the regulars on Radio 4's Woman's Hour. Which, by the way, guys, well worth a listen. Oh, I wouldn't have had you down as a fan, Alan. Well, it's, an, it's a curious story. I was actually uh, stuck in traffic and a classic FM were playing music from an advert which I dislike. So I found myself listening to Woman's Hour and I thought, this is actually good. <laughs> tell your friends. I did. I told ten men and they will tell ten men and they will tell ten men to tell ten men to tell ten men. It sounds like the kind of song you'd sing on a coach trip, but it's actually true. Now, your radio series focuses on trailblazers and groundbreakers in the field of science. Bang on, yeah. It's a chance for some brilliant, lesser-known women to have their stories told, you know what I mean? So, uh, with all due respect to your Ada Lovelaces or Rosalind Franklins, we're going to be looking at women under the bonnet, as it were, um, the fuel in the turbocharger. Because there's some fascinating women here. We're talking Vera Rubin, Nettie Stevens, yeah. Cecilia Payne. I mean, brilliant women. Oh, kick-ass women. Yeah, Cecilia Payne's actually is an amazing story. A British astronomer got her doctorate at 25, boom. <laughs> and she wrote a paper on the composition of the stars, but was persuaded not to publish it by her colleague, Henry Norris Russell. Years later, her findings were published and credited to, you've guessed it. Henry Norris Russell. Bingo. Are you still with us, Alan? The, yeah. So I'm sorry to... Actually, it makes me physically sick to say this, but I was miles away. Which shows this is a real problem within men, isn't it? Um, what I will say, the purposes of clarification, is um, you don't put fuel in the turbocharger. It's a small turbine housed within the exhaust that utilises excess gases, loops them back round, increases power output. So small capacity engine, big hike in power. Very efficient. That was told to me by an engineer in oily overalls called Karen. Woman. Fair play. Yeah. <laughs> well, because women in jobs like that have to put up with their fair share of jeering, you know, even now in 2018, and they just have to accept it. If I can just speak as a male, I am sorry, I have sinned. I've stood on the pavement with other men and slow hand clapped as I watched a woman try to parallel park. And that's wrong. Um, I think if I saw the same thing happen today, I would just, you know, shout out instructions. Or just leave her alone. Yeah, I'd shout out instructions or just leave her alone. I'd ask her which she prefers. Or just leave her alone. Or just leave her alone. These issues need to be aired by women. We're still seeing powerful men harassing women when all they want to do is do their jobs and be left alone. Amen. <laughs> hey, women. I mean, I, I, I feel you, I feel you. I don't, I don't mean I feel you, I wouldn't do that unless I was your, your doctor or your boyfriend. But I totally identify with what you're saying. Well, I, I think the meat is a woman thing, yeah, really, exactly. isn't it? I mean, I'm not sure it's that helpful for a man to presume <laughs> to know what that's like, to be honest, but anyway. Of course it is. Yes. It's, it, you know, if men actually listened to what women were saying on mm. harassment, then they'd shut up and listen, <laughs> but they don't. You know, so we're still seeing the same things time... I've been sexually harassed. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware. It's not quite the same thing that women have been through, but uh, it is a bit.